بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ویلکم ایوری باڈی اسلام علیکم وی آر گوئنگ ٹو سٹارٹ لیکچر نمبر سیونٹین اینڈ دیٹ از اباؤٹ نیٹ ورک ڈائیگرامنگ ٹیکنیکس ویل یو مسٹ ہیو ڈن دس تھنگ ویل یو آر مینیجنگ سمپل پروجیکٹس اینڈ دس از ویری کامن ریمبر وی ہیو لیبوریٹڈ ان دس کلاس دیٹ ایز فار ایز مینجمنٹ آف دا پروجیکٹس Uh, is concerned uh, we use uh, the same method or methodology for uh, simple and complex projects but uh, the level of effort for managing uh, these and the uh, number of tools um, and even uh, the level of uh, effort used for a, uh, one particular tool uh, makes uh, uh, you know um, a project simple or complex as far as management is concerned Um, but before we start with this lecture, uh, we will uh, be having a summary of the previous one, okay. The other day we were talking about some economic concepts and uh, uh, we had discussed about uh, the present value concept uh, and the net present value. Uh, so, um, and you remember the concept like uh, if we are having negative value, the project is not visible and if we are having positive Uh, value the project is uh, feasible and uh, if we are having zero net present value mm, that means uh, the project is indifferent uh, if uh, uh, for the project uh, objectives and goals okay and then we had talked about uh, the interest rate and the concept of compounding periods uh, and we had done a few examples on that how compounding periods actually uh, make some difference And then we had talked about internal rate of return. Uh, remember uh, the interest rate or discount rate on which uh, we have zero net present value uh, is internal rate of return. And uh, more is the internal rate of return, more feasible the project is, and uh, everything beyond uh, stated uh, interest rate is good to be, take up, to be taken up. Uh, and then we had talked about payback period and discounted and simple both methodologies were discussed um, and then break even analysis um, was to uh, discussed and then discounted cash flows uh, we had discussed how to actually make uh, um, uh, project selection uh, through these parameters so these were very few um, Uh, options we have as far as economic or financial appraisal is concerned and uh, uh, there are other parameters uh, available also but uh, main, main focus remains on the cost uh, part of uh, uh, projects uh, so the, these were discussed uh, keeping this thing in view and now we will uh, be moving towards uh, two or three sessions uh, regarding time management part of uh, projects and uh, we will use the same tools and techniques which are employed or used for uh, these simple projects and uh, like um, network diagramming CPM part uh, but Uh, then we will, uh, you know, give another dimension to that. Um, if these tools, when employed on complex project, how can they uh, be uh, used, and uh, what kind of effort you may be in need of, and how even uh, the management becomes a bit difficult or complex uh, when it comes to complex project management. And uh, let's start. So before we Before we start with uh, this uh, uh, time management, we should have the concept of WBS, work breakdown structure. We had talked about that uh, while we were talking about uh, cost estimation. And now we, uh, we, are, we just want to, you know, recap the things. And uh, that is um, the work breakdown structure uh, should be related with this word decomposition. Uh, whenever there is a work breakdown structure, it should be having the same meanings of decomposition. So we decompose our project into manageable work elements, and those work elements are again divided into further manageable uh, elements, and so on and so forth, until we have this very tiny, very manageable uh, part of the project, and uh, where we can actually estimate time and cost and uh, resources uh, for that element with such an ease. Uh, we had talked about the cost part and uh, now we are going to move uh, 
uh, towards the time um, part of uh, that. So um, WBS is the process of decomposition of project in uh, phases, then control accounts, and then work packages. We had talked about uh, what are the control accounts and work packages and planning packages and activities. And uh, over there, we are having this one example of uh, um, construction of house. And uh, uh, over there, you can see the project is divided into six control accounts, five control accounts. And uh, those are land acquisition. The first uh, one is land acquisition. This control account is further divided into uh, four um, uh, uh, work packages. And uh, remember, we um, had uh, this thing. And this uh, WBS code is written on every box. Uh, like one uh, control account, land acquisition and design, uh, that is divided into work packages, land acquisition, uh, design and approval, uh, and connections, and site camp. Okay, and then uh, there are further uh, for uh, uh, work, uh, control accounts which were further divided into respective work packages. Uh, so this is kind of, uh, um, this is a very good example of uh, work breakdown structure. And um, you can see something over there. The dates, the percent, and some duration over there, okay? So just take this one example and over there, uh, construction of house, then this is the control electric works, and the last work package of this control account is panels and fixtures. And over there, we are having this thing. Now, what is that? That is the duration of um, this one um, activity or work package. Uh, because we are not going into activities in, uh, uh, in work breakdown structure level, okay? Uh, so, um, and then these uh, work packages uh, are actually uh, contributing to the uh, electric works, okay? So, if we take these five plus three plus seven plus two, so we are having like uh, 12 and 12 and five. 17. So this means all these activities are being carried out in sequential um, order, and uh, every activity is dependent on other one. Okay. Uh, let's take another example. And um, mm, okay. So over there. So. Uh, the duration uh, for this activity, site camp is five days, and for connections, that is 10 days, and for design and approval, this is 25 days, and land, ac land acquisition, that is 10 days, okay? So, land acquisition, 10 days. Uh, now, if we sum these uh, things up, okay, like 5 plus 10, 15, and 25, 40, and 10. 50. So uh, 50 days effort is required for these four work packages. But over there, you can see what is over there. 25 days. Now, uh, I mean, if we were summing up these four, we were having the same number of days over there. But for these work packages, the things are quite different. So um, here comes a point where you should be having this very clear idea about the duration is something else and different than the effort. Okay. So um, this uh, 50 thing, the submission of all the work packages, uh, that is uh, the total effort uh, or total duration uh, for or the activities. But then some activities may be carried out, uh, you know, in parallel uh, with other activities. Uh, so keeping that in view, we are reaching to that point. So uh, uh, it is not possible, or it is not a good idea, to sum up the duration of activities uh, to get uh, the duration of work packages, or uh, to sum up the work uh, duration of work packages uh, to get. Uh, the um, duration of uh, uh, control account. Uh, so uh, we have to do something else uh, with that. Uh, what else uh, we are in need of, we are going to talk in this uh, very class, okay?
and this is uh, another uh, example very good example and that is about construction of uh, roads and you know uh, uh, there are uh, seven work packages and uh, then every work pa uh, control accounts uh, pardon and then every control account is further divided into work packages so through that uh, discussion we had concluded a few things uh, as far as cost is concerned we can sum up the cost of work packages to reach cost of control account and uh, to reach uh, to the cost of uh, the project we can sum up the control account cost okay but as far as time is concerned this concept is not right okay if we have to uh, we cannot uh, we should not uh, do this thing we cannot uh, uh, sum this thing up okay to reach uh, at times, yes, uh, that may be the right answer, but most of the time this is not because of uh, some uh, other uh, constraints and we are going to talk about that. And another thing is you know, work breakdown structure uh, comprises of, you know, work elements up to usually uh, work packages and activities are not part of WBS. And another thing is WBS is created in scope management part of project management whereas uh, activities are defined in time management part of project management and now here comes uh, these things you know uh, project time management processes there are seven of the uh, seven of them uh, in uh, PMBOK uh, 5 and there were six in PMBOK 4 but they have included one um, uh, thing and that is plan schedule management Okay, so the first process of uh, uh, project time management is plan schedule management. So plan schedule management is the process of establishing the policies, procedures, SOPs, documentation for planning, developing, managing, executing, controlling the project schedule. Okay, so uh, this is all about starting from uh, having some templates or standards or scheduling tool uh, or uh, the level of effort we have to put into everything is actually been planned uh, over there and then uh, there is another uh, process second one and that is define activities now we are having that WBS with us work package the project has been divided in control accounts control accounts have been divided into uh, work packages and planning packages and work pl packages are then you know divided into uh, manageable work elements called uh, activities and the process of identifying and documenting the specific uh, actions to be performed uh, to produce the project deliverables is called uh, defining uh, activities then uh, these activities are dependent on each other or may not be dependent on each other but are dependent on some external dependency uh, but then we have to carry out the sequence activities, activities uh, process. So the process of identifying and documenting relationships, now there is a point, this point is very important, relationship, okay. So over there I have underlined this word, okay. So relationships uh, among the project activities. And then comes es uh, estimate activity resources, uh, the number of resources, the type of resources, uh, and for uh, the uh, time for which these resources are required. Uh, so keeping that this concept of effort in mind, uh, we estimate our resources. Okay. So mm, if we are having, mm, if we have to construct a wall. Uh, so what resources we um, uh, may be in need of, uh, those may include, uh, but not limited to, let's say that is brick masonry wall, uh, then uh, we are in need of bricks, we are in need of cement, sand, water uh, to make mortar, and then um, we are in need of uh, some um, uh, labor and masons and uh, supervisor and then um, testing uh, material for uh, mortar and then mixing machine for uh, making mortar. Uh, mortar is the you know uh, mixture of cement, sand, and water. And what else we are in need of? We are in need of the uh, shuttering for you know um, or scaffolding uh, for uh, uh, masons to stand on and work on to reach to some height. You know, 
and uh, we are may, may be in need of uh, some lift which can actually carry the material from uh, ground to upper levels. See, so these are type of resources we may, uh, may be in need of while we are uh, constructing this uh, wall. And then estimate activity duration is another process, uh, the process of estimating the number of uh, work periods needed to complete uh, individual activities uh, with the estimated resources. So other uh, time we were talking about some resources and now we have to translate uh, these resources into time, you know. Uh, if we are, we are, we have to construct this um, to, uh, 36, um, uh, we have to plant 3600 uh, bricks or uh, uh, we have to lay these uh, bricks. How many resources we are in need of? What resources? We, uh, the resources type we had talked earlier. Now, uh, we do have uh, this uh, thing with us that uh, one mason actually um, lays um, 1200 bricks about uh, while he's on ground floor. Uh, this is one very empirical uh, kind of thing with us. Uh, so, how many resources we are in need if we have to complete this activity in one day, uh, right? Uh, so, total our intention is 3600, one mystery is 1200. And how many days we will divide 3600 We will have this three days uh, duration for that activity. But if we want to complete that activity in one day, then how many masons we are in need of? Okay, we, we are in need of three masons then. But we are available with two masons, okay, in our organization. So what will we do then? Um, then we will, uh, you know, uh, divide this 3600 uh, and uh, that is, that may uh, come about uh, 1.5 days. Uh, so 1.5 is the duration of that activity. So in this fashion we can actually estimate activity duration. We are going to talk about how to uh, um, estimate duration of an activity uh, for uh, projects where no such uh, empirical data is available uh, while we will uh, be having part thing with us. And uh, for this very ses session we are focusing on this thing. sequence activities uh, with uh, uh, relationships, okay? Anyways, uh, then we will uh, develop a schedule. We will carry out some, you know, um, CPM part or uh, stuff like that or bar charts or like uh, uh, Gantt charts. Uh, then we will develop the schedule uh, and the process of analyzing uh, activity sequencing. Uh, durations, uh, resource requirements, and schedule constraints to create the project schedule model. And uh, then control schedule uh, is a process of monitoring the status of uh, project activities to update project uh, progress and manage changes uh, to the um, schedule baseline um, to achieve the plan. So uh, first thing is uh, about defining activities. Uh, so what we have to do is we are having this work breakdown structure with us and uh, we have to divide our work packages further into uh, manageable work elements and those elements are called activities. So an activity or task, now this term is used in project management, this is in most of the softwares they are using this term task. So task and activity is, uh, you know, interchangeable as far as uh, this session is concerned. So is an element of work found and uh, normally found on the WBS that has an expected duration, a cost, and resource requirement. <clears throat> a project is divided into set of manageable activities. And then uh, second thing, sequence activities, and we are going to talk about uh, this part. Uh, involves reviewing activities and determining dependencies. A dependency or relationship relates to the sequencing of the project activities or task. Uh, you must determine um, dependencies in order to use critical path analysis. And now what is this thing? I mean critical path analysis. My question to you, if you are having good uh, uh, answer with you. Uh, we have to hold those answers till next, next session while we will be talking about uh, critical path method and PERD. And uh, for this very session we are focusing on sequencing activities and for that uh, before uh, we move uh, towards we will uh, learn how many 
relationships uh, are there. Uh, so there are four types of uh, dependencies or logical relationships available with us. And <clears throat> there is a word PDM. And what is PDM? We are going to talk about precedence uh, uh, diagramming method. Uh, but uh, before we will talk on uh, that PDM, we, we will finish this slide first, okay? So relationships are maybe of uh, four types uh, between activities. Uh, the first one is finish to start, FS. Uh, so this is the most common uh, type of relationship we come across. And uh, the initiation of successor activity uh, depends upon the completion of predecessors activity. So successor one is which comes after uh, this activity and predecessor uh, activity is one uh, which is before uh, the uh, activity. Okay, so let's have an example if we are having this activity and this activity and if that is A and that is P. So over there B is a successor activity and A is predecessor activity. Uh, so, mm, and uh, this relationship is ca called as finish to start, okay? Uh, so A must finish before B can be started, okay? Finish to finish. Uh, the completion of successor activity depends upon the completion of predecessor activity. So, um, uh, this relationship can, will be shown in next slide. Uh, the concept is, uh, if we are having this A and B concept over there, so the concept is, A activity ki completion us waqat khatam hogi jab B activity ki completion uh, ho jayegi. Uh, jab tak wo B ki khatam nahi hogi, to A B saas saas chalti rahi. Halakhe B baad mein start hoi. Okay. Start to start, the initiation of successor activity depends upon the initiation of predecessor activity. Jab tak aap ki jo pehl dusri activity hai, B activity hai, wo us waqa start ho sakti hai jab A activity aap ki start ho jai. Jab tak A start nahi hogi, to B bhi start nahi hogi. And the completion of successor activity depends upon the initiation of the predecessor activity start to finish and the completion of jo Dusri activity hai, B activity hai, uh, uski completion jo hai, wo pehli activity ke initiation ke upar depend gati hai, but this type of relationship is uh, not used that frequently. This is the least used uh, 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 relationship in network diagrams. Okay, now let's have the graphical representation of all these uh, four uh, relationships. Okay, now we are having that finish to start, finish to start is a is finished over there and then comes B, okay? So then B is started and uh, this thing shows some duration, okay? And this thing is, so the length of the bar is showing the duration, okay? So B cannot start until task A finishes, okay? And then uh, start to start. So um, A cannot start until, uh, B cannot start until A uh, starts, okay? And then finish to finish, uh, B cannot uh, finish until A finishes, okay? And then task uh, B cannot finish until task A starts. So these are uh, relationships as far as uh, uh, dependency type is concerned. And uh, determination of dependency, how we determine uh, the relationship? Uh, dependencies uh, may be characterized by the following attributes. The first uh, one is mandatory and or discretionary and then internal or external. There are four characteristics, okay? So these attributes, four of them, but two can be applicable at the same time on following ways. Mandatory external dependencies, mandatory internal dependencies, and discretionary external dependencies, and discretionary internal dependencies. So these are uh, type of attributes, four attributes, and how they can be used. Now what are mandatory uh, dependencies? So mandatory dependencies uh, are those th uh, which are uh, legally or contractually required or inherent in the nature of the work, okay? So mandatory relationship often involve physical limitations, uh, such as on a construction project, let's say, where it is impossible to erect 
superstructure uh, until after uh, uh, the foundation has been built uh, or on the electronic project where a prototype has to be built before it can be tested see so there are a few activities like superstructure banana hamne ghar ka to jab tak hum uski buniyad hi nahi banayenge superstructure nahi ban sakta isi tarah agar aap ek uh, सॉफ्टवेयर कर रहे हैं तो उसके अंदर अगर दो एक्टिविटीज हैं कि राइटिंग अ कोड एंड देन इंटीग्रेटिंग और टेस्टिंग इट सो जब तक आप कोड लिखेंगे नहीं तो आप टेस्ट नहीं कर सकते तो ये बेसिकली मैंडेटरी आपकी रिलेशनशिप होता है सो मैंडेटरी डिपेंडेंसीज आर आल्सो समटाइम्स रेफर टू हैज हार्ड लॉजिक एंड हार्ड हार्ड डिपेंडेंसीज एंड देन मैंडेटरी डिपेंडेंसीज शुड नॉट बी कन्फ्यूज विद द साइनिंग शेड्यूल कॉन्स्ट्रेंट in the scheduling tool uh, so this thing will be explained in um, scheduling part of <clears throat> and then discretionary uh, dependencies uh, these are sometimes referred to as preferred logic pref uh, preferential logic or soft logic okay and then discretionary dependencies are established based on knowledge of uh, best practices uh, within a particular application area or some unusual uh, aspect of the project where a specific sequence is desired even though there may be other acceptable sequences okay the project team determines which dependencies are discretionary during the process of sequencing the activities external relationship or dependencies involve a relationship between the project activities and non project activities these dependencies are usually outside the project team's control uh, so um, if you are constructing a house and uh, there is uh, an uh, activity brickwork and you are dependent on the activity of the supplier the supplier will actually Uh, buy the material and will supply it to the site and if this activity is delayed your project will be delayed so your internal uh, project activity uh, that is brick work is dependent on uh, this uh, external activity that is supplying of the bricks and that is beyond the control of the team uh, obviously for example this is uh, there is another example testing activity in software project may be dependent on the delivery of hardware from an external source and then internal dependencies internal dependencies involve a pr uh, precedence relationship between project activities and are generally inside the project team's control um for example if team cannot test a machine until they assemble it this is an internal mandatory dependency and now uh, there is a point uh, we have reached to that thing um network diagrams and uh, we had discussed something a uh, uh, few things which which are uh, required pre hand for understanding this uh, concept of network diagrams so network diagrams are the preferred techniques uh, for showing activity sequencing a network diagram is a schematic display of the logical relationship among or sequence of project activities and there are two uh, formats available uh, one is called arrow and another is called precedence diagramming method so arrow diagramming method or precedence diagramming method we are going to have some hands on uh, session today on that so uh, this is an example of a precedence uh, network diagram uh, so over there you can see this uh, this box is actually representing or uh, this box or node is representing um uh, one of the um, activity and uh, this activity is further you know uh, is um, having relationship with three activities so a b c and d are dependent on uh, a activity so b c and d are called burst activities and uh, then f activity is dependent on uh, you know um, b uh c and d so uh, this is called uh, merge uh, activity okay so this is how we are having so this is basic uh, network structure and uh, this is another example and that is um, uh, activity on arrow diagram uh i'm not going into detail for uh, this is these are just examples humne ye sari examples karni hai aur jab hum inke relevant sections mein jayenge yahi diagrams hum khud bana ke dekhenge so uh, 
पिछली वाली जो डायग्राम थी उसके अंदर ये था कि जो एक्टिविटी थी वो नोड से जाहिर हो रही थी तो उसको हम एक्टिविटी ऑन नोड भी बोलते हैं इसके अंदर जो है एक्टिविटी आपकी एरो से रिप्रेजेंट हो रही है नाउ दिस इज कॉल्ड एक्टिविटी ऑन एरो एंड एक्टिविटी इज डिनोटेड बाय एरो एंड जस्ट फॉर गेट अबाउट वॉट दीज नंबर आर ओके एट दिस पॉइंट इन टाइम वी आर नॉट गोइंग इन टू इट एट दिस पॉइंट इन टाइम ओके नाउ सो दिस एक्टिविटी A and B and C. These are dependent on nothing, but D is dependent on A, E is dependent on B, F is dependent on B, G is dependent on C, I is dependent. But we are going to understand this thing. Okay. So let's start with uh, first method to construct a network diagram, and first method is called arrow diagramming method. and this is also called activity on arrow a network diagram and activities are represented by arrows uh, first thing first uh, so in activity on uh, arrow method or uh, arrow diagramming method the activities are represented by arrows and the nodes or circles are the starting and ending points uh, of the activities and now the limitation is there mm, the limitation of this uh method is it can only show finish to start relationship and that's it now this is the limitation of this but the other method uh, they can actually take up all these okay now what is the process of uh, creating activity on uh, arrow diagram uh, first uh, find all the activities that start at node 1 but before we find all the activities that start at node 1 we must have something with us and that is a list of activities we should have okay so we must have and how uh, do we get that list of activities remember we had this wbs and uh, that is uh, wbs or uh, work breakdown structure was developed in scope management part of uh, project management and then we were having this uh, process of time management define activities and define activities was about you know uh, having a list of activities from the wbs mm, and that that list of activities is available with us and then activity attributes uh, right uh, so few of the activity attributes like which activity is dependent on which one uh, is decided in define activities part of uh, uh, time management then uh, we are now moving into mm, the uh, uh, sequence activity is part of time management and uh, uh, we assume that by this point in time we are into sequence activities that we are having this list and uh, the relationship with us uh, of those activities so find all the activities uh, that start at node 1 and uh, uh, which activities will uh, start on node 1 you know uh, first you should have a node 1 and we are going to uh, do some practical example ab wo aise pata chalega ki node 1 pe jo start hongi har wo activity jo kisi ke upar dependent nahi hai jo activity kisi ke upar dependent nahi hai wo aapki node number 1 se start hoti hai usually so um फिर आप क्या करेंगे कि उसको एक एरो लगा लेंगे लाइक तीन एक्टिविटीज हैं पहले आप एक सर्कल लगाएंगे सर्कल लगा करके आप तीन एरोस उसमें से निकाल लेंगे और तीन एरोस क्या शो करें कि तीन एक्टिविटीज हैं जो प्रोजेक्ट को स्टार्ट कर रही हैं और तीन एक्टिविटीज किसी के ऊपर डिपेंड नहीं है और जहां वो खत्म होंगी वहां आप एक फिर नोड लगा देंगे फुट एक्टिविटी लेटर और नेम एंड और ड्यूरेशन एस्टिमेट ऑन द एसोसिएटेड एरो सो यू हैव देन यू हैव ड्रॉन द एरो यू हैव फर्स्ट यू हैड ड्रॉन वन ऑफ द नोड एंड देन यू हैड ड्रॉन द एक्टिविटी एरो एंड देन यू हैव ड्रॉन द एरो एंड नोड finish node now put a word on that okay we are going to do this thing uh, okay let's have um, so this is the node and let's say this is an activity and this is finish node and put a word like a so activity so this arrow is showing uh, this arrow is showing over there uh, as uh, activity a okay so continue drawing um, Uh, the network diagram uh, working from left to right uh, look for the burst and merges we had talked a little bit on that a burst occurs when a single node is uh, 
followed by so there is this is burst okay uh, followed by two or more activities and merge occurs when two or more activities uh, two or more uh, merge occurs when two or more nodes precede a single node okay so this is merge over there Continue drawing uh, the project network diagram until all activities that have dependencies uh, are included in the diagram. As a rule of thumb, all uh, arrow um, heads should face towards the right, and no arrow uh, should cross in AO. Uh, this is not a good thing, you know. So this is, uh, again, a limitation, you know. So that is not very important limitation, but that is part of it. Okay. So let's have uh, let's revise what we have talked by this time. No. What is activity? Uh, an activity represents an action and consumption of resources, time, money, energy, uh, and other uh, human machinery, equipment, whatever the resources we have required to complete a portion of project. Uh, activity is represented by an arrow. <clears throat> so this is uh, this is it over there. Uh, so this activity uh, A is called an activity over there. Okay, and this is node, and we are going to talk about that. So event, an event or node will always occur at the beginning and at, uh, end of an activity. Okay, the event has no resources and is represented by a circle. The ith event of the jth event are the tail event and head event, respectively. Let's say. So, uh, this is uh, this event is a tail event and this is head event over there. Okay. So, activity and events or nodes we had talked about that now. Let's move further. Okay. Merge and burst uh, concept. Uh, one or more activities can start and end simultaneously at an ev event. And uh, this is an example of merge, where two or uh, more activities are actually uh, going into one node, and burst activity, where uh, two or more activities are, uh, you know, stemming from uh, this one uh, node. Okay, and then preceding and succeeding activities, activities performed before given events are known as preceding activities. So, if we are having one activity over there, so these three activities are preceding activities and activities performed after a given event are known as succeeding activities so this activity is succeeding activity okay so this is an example of that so over there uh, a is preceding activities where uh, activity where c is succeeding activity and b is preceding activity and d is succeeding activity okay if we are having one another activity over there and that is uh, activity E. So E is uh, succeeding activity. Now uh, the C and D, which were succeeding activities the other time, uh, now become the preceding activities. Okay. So this is uh, okay. Dummy activities are an imaginary activity which does not consume any resources and time is called dummy activity and what is the big point having this dummy, dummy activities dummy activities are simply used to represent a connection between events in order to maintain a logic in the network we are going to talk about that it is represented by dot line in network diagram so um, uh, let's say uh, this is a and this is B and C. The, there, are, there are three activities. And um, if we are having this T activity over there. Now, so uh, B activity is succeeding activity, whereas A is preceding activity, and C is also uh, succeeding activity. But then for D, B is uh, preceding activity, and D is succeeding activity. But this, and this is in dotted, OK? This is dotted. D is also dependent on B as well as on C. So what should we do then? Uh, should we put things like that? No. Uh, no, we cannot do that. 
uh, if we are we can have two or more activities merge into and we may have two or more activities stemming from one node but we cannot have uh, the same two activities uh, stemming from one node and merging fr into uh, another node right so this is a limitation again so uh, now errors to be avoided in construct, uh, constructing a network uh, first thing is two activities starting from a tail event must not must not have a same end event to ensure this it is absolutely necessary to introduce a dummy activity so this is wrong and this is right okay uh, and looping error should not be uh, formed in a network as it is it represents performance of activities repeatedly in a cyclic manner uh, so this thing is a uh, not right one okay so uh, this activity a this b and c so a, a is dependent on c and uh, b is dependent on a and b c is dependent on b so that is wrong this is cyclic in a network there should only be one start event and one ending event okay so and there should be one uh, and one okay and then uh, there is uh, fourth and that the direction of arrows should flow from left to right avoiding mixing of directions okay so uh, again over there this is wrong because you are going towards left okay uh, some conventions uh, uh, so of network diagram so B can be performed only after A is finished uh, and C can be performed only after completing activity B and activity B and C can start uh, simultaneously only after completion of activity A and uh, activity A and B must be completed before start of activity C uh, and then uh, activity C must start only after completing activity A and B uh, but activity D can start after completion of activity B okay so these are few uh, uh, conventions for network diagrams so let's start with an example uh, construct a network diagram for a project whose activities and their pre uh, predecessors relationship are given in table okay so this is a table now let's start with it remember the first step is we we are having that uh, we have to draw a node okay let's say this is a node okay <coughs> and how many activities which are not dependent on any activity over there uh, so you can have uh, like a b and c these are dependent on there are no predecessors to that those okay so um, from this we can have three arrows stemming from that okay and uh, when we are done with uh, drawing uh, the arrows we have to put a node in front of them now this is called starting node and this is finish node okay and now we have to put uh, capital uh, capital for uh, or identifier of the activities on a p and c right so we have drawn three of three activities done 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 and now activity d and activity d is dependent on a so we can draw a line over there an arrow and this is called T so activity D is dependent on activity A and then E is dependent on B and there will be an arrow and end note and this is E okay and there is F activity that is also dependent on B so we are in need of another arrow and this arrow shows activity F okay and then activity G that is dependent on C okay so we are having this thing um, G right so we are done with this 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 and this so we are done with these activities and now H activity is dependent on D and where is D D is the over there so we will start one arrow from there and then we will end this arrow on a node and this is called H okay and then there is activity I which is dependent on E so we will draw another node and that is I okay 
and then j is dependent on uh, j is dependent on h and i so we will uh, what should we do so uh, for uh, this thing uh, we will draw a dummy activity let's say and dummy activity is draw, draw with, shown with uh, dot line and let's say we put d u m 1 okay and then an activity j see so j is dependent on h very much but dummy that is also i is also uh, is you know proceeding towards j as well okay and then we are left with uh, one last activity and that is k and that is depend on f and g f and g again we will introduce another dummy over there uh, f and g and there So this is kind of uh, network diagram we are having. Uh, let's say the solution. Uh, so this would be just like that. You know, uh, we may have a thing like that um, as far as a network diagram is concerned. Okay. So another example: uh, draw a network diagram for a project given in a table. Uh, and this is uh, the table and uh, let's start with uh, uh, drawing first we have to draw an arrow uh, uh, from a node and the arrow will represent uh, the activity which is dependent on nothing okay so a activity is dependent on nothing okay so we will have this activity and we will put a word a over there okay and then uh, B is dependent on A. Uh, let's find out how many activities are dependent on A and this one and this one. Okay. So from this node, there will be two arrows. And one is will be called as B, another will be T. Okay. And then um, how many activities are dependent on B? Only one. So we will. Uh, have one arrow from B and this is called C okay and then we are done with that we are done with that and how many are dependent on D one two three three activities are dependent on D okay so we will have one two and three activities from D and those are uh, C and E, E, and uh, then is G. This is G, and then H. Okay. Now we we have drawn E, G, and H. Okay. Now F F is dependent on C and E. So C and E. So either we can put a dummy or we can have, you know, uh, we can have And there comes F. So F is dependent on two activities. And then uh, there is uh, uh, I activity, and that is dependent on H. And J is also dependent on uh, H. And uh, uh, so let's say uh, I is dependent on H. So one arrow is for, let's say, I. And another arrow is for uh, J, right? And we have drawn these two as well. Now K, K is dependent on F and H. 
So F and H, uh, we are having, uh, there is activity K. So one activity should stem from that and should reach there. Uh, if we actually redraw a little bit of this and we can have so these modification are required you know uh, while you are actually doing the stuff you have to you can you sh uh, you may be in need to you know remodify all the stuff uh, so that you can uh, have some uh, good network diagram consistent one okay so h we will draw h uh, So this is H. And this is F. And uh, H. And for H, there are two activities, I. And there is activity uh, I and uh, J, OK? And for this is F activity, and then you may introduce a dummy, or if that there is a need, or uh, and then we are having K, K activity, and that is now dependent on H and F, okay? And there is L uh, that is dependent on G and J. Now that is J, and this is G. So uh, either we can, and both are you know ending on uh, nothing so we can have another uh, we can uh, eliminate this and this and we can put them into one common um, node okay so G may come to that point and there is a common node and this is called uh, this activity may be called as um, L now see these uh, this activity I is finished on uh, something and K is finished on something and L is finished on something but remember um, uh, the activities are started on a common node and finished on common node so we put a common node over there and we delete uh, the remaining uh, ones and this one and this one and then uh, we finish these activities on a uh, common uh, node okay so this is I this is so see this is a iterative pro process and you can you have you may have other uh, thinking you may introduce dummy but at times you uh, another example we had introduced our dummy activity but we could have avoided that thing and uh, um, so this is an uh, this is uh, the network diagram kind of we were actually uh, constructing over there uh, so you know uh, we may have a uh, similar type of uh, uh, things uh, the thing is the point over there is uh, you may have uh, um, a different uh, thought process and uh, um, uh, then we should uh, be having uh, this thing we can introduce dummy activities at times which we, we should we can avoid uh, those uh, but the thing is the point is over there uh, the activities are denoted by the arrows starting from one node finished on one node the whole project is started in one node and finished on uh, the last one node okay and uh, this is an another example and that is about uh, um, um, construction uh, and over there we can have a very good table and this uh, with durations obviously attributes um, and uh, this there comes the node number and this is and the solution of that so you actually go through uh, this thing uh, very carefully uh, while uh, you are working on uh, this example sh I shown uh, I've shown you uh, we will uh, move forward and that is another uh, way of uh, or other um, Mm, method of uh, drawing a network diagram is precedence diagramming method. Uh, so activities are represented by boxes or circles, but those are called nodes. So that's why this activity is also called activity or node. Uh, arrows show relationship between uh, the activities. More popular than ADM method is used by the project management software. Better at showing different types of dependencies. Uh, for that one, uh, you remember we had only one. Uh, type of uh, dependency uh, was available with us okay uh, 
So this is an example of uh, uh, precedence network diagram and uh, this uh, is the identifier activity A and you know this box sh it shows uh, activity A and this box shows activity B and this shows activity C. And uh, there may be another information or other information contained in that box, uh, but uh, over there, this arrow shows the relationship, okay? So the D is dependent on A, and the relationship type is uh, finished to start, FS, okay? Mm, so when D will be started, uh, when A is finished, and uh, D is uh, uh, proceeding activity to H, and H is dependent on D as well as E, and uh, J is dependent on F and is dependent on I and G is dependent on C and proceeding activity to I okay so J is dependent on H F and I and uh, these are uh, uh, these uh, actually boxes and this relationship make a very good network diagram and this this is simple to construct as far as there is no dummy concept in uh, um, this type of there is no need to introduce a dummy for this type of um, method okay so uh, we are uh, going to have this example um, and uh, uh, a and b are dependent on nothing so uh, we will uh, draw two boxes a and b over there and what we do is we divide our boxes into vertical and horizontal three columns three rows and what is the logic behind that we will discuss this thing uh, in relevant uh, section okay and then B is dependent in nothing remember for uh, if that would have been uh, the activity on arrow we could have started from this and then A and B but for that we will start straight away with the activities okay and A or B are dependent on nothing so we have drawn these two and then uh, C is dependent on both A and B so there is an activity C and that is dependent on A as well as B okay so uh, this is very straightforward you know you 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 draw first activity those activities which are dependent on nothing or nobody or uh, no other activity uh, and then you draw the activities which are dependent on these activities and just uh, show the relationship so this is showing the C is dependent on A and B and then uh, D is uh, uh, depend on uh, C and E is depend on C so we are going to construct two boxes and D and E and those are dependent on C and E and remember uh, we can have uh, two arrows for every activity see so uh, we are done uh, by that time uh, D is dependent on C E is dependent on C and C is dependent on A and C is dependent on B okay now uh, and then uh, there is activity F that is dependent on D and E so there is activity F over there F that is dependent on D and E okay uh, or and uh, F and G G is dependent on E okay uh, G is also uh, dependent on E so we have this thing activity G and that is dependent on E okay and uh, then uh, H is dependent on F and G. So F and G, so
Now, network diagram is completed. Our network diagram over there is uh, uh, there. And from that diagram, we can see that H is dependent on F and G, G is dependent on E, F is dependent on D and E, and uh, E is dependent on C, D is dependent on C. So this is very good uh, diagram. So we can actually apprehend the sequence of activities. Uh, so network diagrams are used uh, for uh, showing the relationship uh, between uh, the activities. Uh, okay, some people used to have this thing. They, they may start uh, with this diamond shape thing and then put over there and then they may have similar diamond over there but uh, I do not see any reason basically the concept is same you know starting from one node and ending on another uh, one node uh, but the concept is you are not in need of that okay uh, if you are having this thing that is quite okay but if you come across with such diagrams uh, where uh, those uh, precedents or um, activity on node diagrams are uh, started with node and ended up on some nodes uh, then you should not be confused the concept remains the same okay uh, so uh, let's have another exercise and and that is uh, we have drawn our uh, activity on node let's draw activity on arrow of the same example okay uh, so A and B are dependent on nothing. So first of all, we will draw this arrow over uh, this uh, node over there, and they from that we will have A and B. Okay, and C is dependent on. A and B both okay so what we will we cannot do that okay we cannot do that so we will add dummy and then there is an activity that is called C and on C we are having dependent D and E okay so one is T another is E D and E okay and then F is dependent on D and E okay so uh, F is dependent on D and E so we have we will introduce another dummy and there is F so dummy 2 and then uh, F is drawn, E is, uh, G is on E, G is dependent on E, so G is dependent on, there is an activity G and that is dependent on E, okay, and uh, mm, uh, and then uh, H is dependent on F and G, F and G, so we can actually put this thing over there like okay and that is G and we can cross that okay and we can raise that and then there is activity H now uh, we can put node numbers as well one two three four five six seven and eight right so uh, this is uh, activity on node diagram and this is activity on arrow diagram uh, so which one is easy is easy I prefer this one okay uh, activity on um, node diagram uh, we do not have to follow so much uh, 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 rules but uh, you know uh, that is straightforward and that is easy to look okay H is dependent on F and G and over there H is F and G but uh, F is dependent on D and there is a dummy activity and e, hence is dependent on E as well so this is kind of the limitation of uh, this method and another uh, 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 thing which is missing of for that is it can only show one type of relationship whereas uh, this uh, method can uh, use all of the relationship types okay so uh, 
there is an example and uh, we have to construct a precedence and a diagram uh, based on the same activity description below activity hr2 t1 start the project uh, activity t2 can start when activities hi and s are completed uh, so uh, activity e1 also depends on activity r2 activity x follows activity h and uh, proceed activity l uh, activity e is preceded by activity t2 and p1 uh, the predecessors to activity g are activities l t2 and p1 the successor to activity uh, t1 are activities e1 s w and d2 and so on and so forth so this is a kind of a uh, very good example and we have to construct that so this is your assignment right uh, so we have to construct this thing uh, can you do that now why this assignment is given over there and uh, why uh, this is for your uh, practice so while we start from this very simple concept and now we have come to this very practical example and we are going to show you the solution at the end of the uh, this uh, slide but the concept is uh, how complex uh, can things turn up uh, with the time okay so and uh, this is a very uh, complex type of uh, uh, network diagram over there so this is precedence uh, network diagram and activity on node over there so these are active nodes and uh, uh, s start and uh, from start there are activities h r2 and t1 and e1 is dependent on t1 and r2 and x is dependent on h and t2 is dependent on h e1 s p1 is dependent on w and p2 is dependent on d2 uh, and W and F is dependent on W and E is dependent on F, P2, P1, T2 and see how complex this uh, becomes uh, when it comes to uh, complex situations. For uh, to attend those complex situations we make uh, become, uh, maybe in need of uh, softwares and that's all uh, this is uh, for today's lecture but before we conclude our lecture uh, we have to have a summary of uh, uh, our lecture so we had talked about a little bit of uh, WBS usage as far as time management is concerned and then we had discussed seven processes of time management we had given uh, consideration or focused uh, focus on uh, uh, the second third one uh, third process and that is um, sequence activities and for that we had uh, uh, discussed about the relationship types uh, and then uh, network diagrams and we had done activity on arrow or uh, diagramming method and activity on node diagramming method so um, this is it and um, this is today's end note success is a journey not a destination uh, i say uh, thank you uh, good luck and allah peace